Hi guys, and welcome to Wilson Guitars. Today, I'm going to be attempting to recreate John Frusciante's 1962 Fender Stratocaster using a Squire. Now, a lot of people think that Squires are inherently awful sounding guitars. They're cheap, they're nasty. But I want to show people with the right modifications, you can get a guitar that sounds pretty damn good. Now, if I had several thousand pounds kicking around, I could probably get the custom shop to build me one of these things. But I don't. And I like taking things apart, I like modifying them, experimenting, never putting them back together again. It's fun. So here we have it. This is the Squire Standard Stratocaster that I picked up for £80 on Facebook. I'll be changing just about everything on this guitar apart from the neck and the body. I'll be putting in uh, new tuners. I regard that as absolutely necessary on this guitar. I mean, they are shocking, really bad tuners. Uh, I'll be changing the nut out for a bone nut. Um, I'll level and I'll crown all the frets. And I'll also be changing out the bridge for a much higher quality, maybe a high mass steel bridge. Um, I'll be swapping out the pit guard for a mint green one. And the pickups I'll be upgrading to the ones that John uses in his strats, which is the Seymour Duncan SSL1 set. Um, I'll also be replacing the cheap wiring in the 500k pots with 250k CTS pots for all you nerds out there. Um, I'll be removing this thick polyester finish from the guitar and replacing it with a nitrocellulose three-tone sunburst before then ruining it with car keys and belt sanders and all that kind of jazz. So the first modification we're going to make is to remove this access cover for the tremolo. Now I think these things only exist to make it harder for you to restring on stage. Um, they are infuriating things so yeah, that can go. I'm going to put a brand new set of Diodario 10s on here. Um, so the comparison should be fair, there'll be brand new strings on both um, before and after. Uh, I'll also be measuring the pickup heights with digital calipers and I'll make sure that my amp settings are identical. So we should be able to draw some really good comparisons here between the before and after um, and really analyse if the changes that I'm going to make will make any difference at all. Um, I imagine the pickups will make the biggest difference. I hope to prove wrong in the, the finish on the guitar, I hope that improves the sound. Uh, a lot of people rave on about the nitrocellulose and how it lets the guitar resonate better. The tuners I'm sure will make a huge difference because, uh, like I said earlier, then the stock tuners on on these squires, these basic squires are really, really poor quality. Uh, I've never had much good luck with them. And these weren't staying in tune, they were di actually difficult to turn, and uh, slipping, and wow, just absolutely horrendous. I really think Squire could do with upgrading those even on the most basic models because uh, that must be so frustrating for a beginner. So one thing that surprised me about the guitar as I was taking it apart and having a play on it and demoing it was the neck on this thing. It's really quite fat. It's probably fatter than my other strats that I've got and the nut width is a hair over 42 millimeters as well so uh, remarkably similar to what you would find on a, on a vintage instrument slightly rounder fatter neck. American standard strats they have a 43 mil nut width and while that doesn't sound like a lot I find that that one mil can make really quite a big difference in um, how easy it is for me to get my thumb over the top and play like Frusciante. <laughs> So here I am in the garden on one of those rare sunny days in the north of England. I'm attaching a temporary MDF neck uh, just to make it easier to hold really while I sand and scrape away the old finish. Uh, for main leg work I'm using a heat gun and a scraper. It takes a while and uh, it really really stinks. I mean do not do this indoors under any circumstances. Um, thankfully here I have the wind behind me but it even, even then it still stinks, it gets up your nostril. Uh, so once I'd finished uh, cooking this thing I could get to work with my absolute favourite power tool of all time. Say hello to my little friend. So, I must say, I don't really enjoy the process of stripping guitars. Uh, it's a dusty, messy old job. Uh, like I said earlier, it stinks. You really do have to wear a good quality mask and do it outside. But it, it is a blessing and a curse. It's satisfying to see the, the, the nice old the body underneath. Um, it's quite exciting actually to see what you find sometimes on these old squires, you get a good quality three piece on the body, sometimes it's a five piece, and sometimes it's a seven piece. I haven't really found a tool that can take the finish off the curves in the tight spots um, without misshaping them. So I use regular sandpaper and that is that really does take a long time, but it works well and you know you just gotta get on with it. 
and you get to the fun bits later. So next up we've got to take the finish off the headstock. Um, it doesn't look like there's a finish on there, but there is. It's some sort of sanding sealer. Um, it's quite thick actually, so what we'll do is we'll put a bit of nitrocellulose on there. Just a nice thin finish, let the, let the neck resonate there. Uh, then the next thing to do is to fill the um, extra string tree hole. Uh, I don't know why Fender put those on there, really. Um, I don't think it's all that necessary. There's plenty of string tension there to keep the strings in the nut. Um, I'm going to use a, a toothpick and some wood glue. I keep a lot of these around. I, keep, I buy them in bulk, really. I use uh, they, they come in really handy for filling tiny holes, as you can imagine. There's a 62 strat headstock. That's what we're trying to achieve now. And to get that, we're going to start with some wood dye. Um, and what I'm using here is just a bit of coffee, a bit of turmeric, and some wood stain mixed together to try and achieve that look. It doesn't look all that great there, but it, just bear with me here. That's not the finished article by any means. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the middle and sand it just, just to give it an unevenness to the patina uh, and I think that that's something that you'd find on a um, on a genuine vintage instrument uh, it kind of creates an almost like a sunburst look to the, uh, to the headstock uh, if you were to just use the amber tinted nitro straight away without uh, doing any uh, prep work I think what you usually find then is that it ends up looking like a reissue uh, not like a relic and not like a vintage instrument at all so it, here's the tinted gloss anyway now that I've um, created, like I said, some unevenness to the patina, I go ahead and shoot it with a bit of uh, nitro. I put a couple of coats on and I do a bit of um, pre-relicking I suppose, and just by knocking it around on the driveway to create a few dings and to remove a bit of lacquer from the edges like you probably see when um, where the guitar might have hit maybe a ride cymbal or the corner of an amp on stage or whatever. So the first thing to do here was to level the frets. There were flat sections in the middle of the frets all over, they hadn't been crowned properly. Uh, and what can, this can do is it can create problems with the intonation and the tuning. Because if you think about it, the centre of the fret is now bang in the middle of that flat spot. There is no peak to the fret. So the notes are they're going to sound slightly sharp, uh, so no dice. So it's time to check the neck for straights, uh, tweak the truss rod until it was bang on, and then proceeded to mark it with a sharpie. And this is helpful in seeing how much material you're removing as you run your levelling beam across the top, just to determine where you're low frets are as they will uh, retain the sharpie lines. Um, so once I leveled it, I marked the frets once again and I filed them so there was maybe a sort of one millimetre peak at the top of the frets before I polished them off which <coughs> which sort of rounds them off. So now it's time to go about replacing that old stock nut that we broke getting out. Uh, I would have replaced it anyway with a bleached bone nut or a tusk nut or something. And here I am using bleached bone. I'm just using a, a stock blank that I bought. I measured the radius at the bottom of the nut slot because on Fender guitars the, uh, the nuts are curved at the bottom to match the radius of the fretboard. Uh, it makes the job slightly harder, but it's not impossible. I've just used my radius gauge to draw a line across the, the bone nut blank. Uh, and that's the material to be removed to create the curve at the bottom. And I've just used the belt sander to, do, to achieve that. That does the job pretty effectively. And I used the straight edge laid across the frets to then gauge the height of the first fret. Using my feeler gauges and then what I do is I bend the feeler gauges across the fretboard and mark with a pencil the line on the new nut and that's the line to file to. And once I've filed my new nut slots they will be the same height as the frets and that should make for optimum playability. So, let's install the new nut. Um, I made sure when I thickened it that it was a nice tight fit and that should improve the transferring of resonance through the neck and improve the tone. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, it fits pretty well. And the next thing we need to do is to install the new tuners. And I'm using Wilkinson Cluson style for that vintage look um, and I found that they're very good quality as well. Um, so we put the new ferrules in and here's a before picture and after. I'm pretty happy with that, so far anyway, um, so let's crack on. Back to our body, I've stripped it of its finish and as you can see here I've just left the scorch marks on the contours, because they're just going to be covered in black anyway. Um, I'm using a clear amber gloss here just to create the centre of the sunburst. Uh, you'll notice I'm not wearing a mask, which is pretty inadvisable really, but um, I hold my breath for the entire duration of the spray and then I quickly uh, scamper away to breathe. And that works fine, but I will be investing in a proper vapour respirator at some point soon, as the fumes from nitrocellulose aren't exactly known for their pleasantness. 
Uh, for the black around the edges, I just cut a template on both sides of the strat, and then I make it slightly smaller. And that leaves a, a gap around the edge, which is going to be covered in our nitrocellulose black gloss. So the uh, only box I could find anywhere on Earth was this uh, one with lots of lager in it. So I noticed on John's strat that the line was very prominent, going from black to red. Um, so only a slight fade was necessary. And up next I use the cherry red transparent gloss, and this creates the fade between the black and the amber that you see on the three-tone sunbursts. So here I'm reattaching the pit guard, just to get a gauge for where to begin the rally process. I've also removed the finish from the back of the neck, focusing on the areas of play wear that usually exist on vintage Stratocasters. Completely removed the finish, in fact, and um, applied a few coats of light oak stain, and um, gives it a grey look that that comes from the oils from your from your hands and dirt and grime getting in there, and that seems to replicate it pretty well. And I'm also finding various blunt instruments around the house, uh, different sharpness and edges, and, and this is to create a sort of random look to the dents that I'm putting in the the ends of the headstock. From my own experience of being on the road and, and touring with bands your headstocks get a bit of abuse from ride cymbals and um, the backs of amps and just generally dropping them on things. So now I'm going to begin relicking the hardware. Um, I'm going to remove the made in china engraving from the back of the neck plate. It's using the belt sander. Um, and then I'll uh, bring it back up to a sort of brushed steel look with fine sandpaper using the orbital sander. So to relic the hardware I'm just using patio cleaner which is a hydrochloric acid solution. Brick acid works as well, any muriatic acid will work just fine. Uh, now a word of warning here, uh, this stuff is evil. Don't get it on your skin and don't breathe in the fumes and by Jove, don't get it in your eyes. Uh, how I achieve the look is to put the acid in a large container before floating the hardware in, in the acid in a smaller plastic container. Then I make the whole thing airtight. I'd liken the experience to a few of the ferry trips I've been on over the years. Um, after leaving it for a few hours I remove the lid making absolutely sure not to breathe in as I do so, um, else you'll be stripped of your very soul, or at least your nostril hair. And there we have it. What was once a set of nice new shiny guitar parts, now looks like it was salvaged from the Mary Rose, so mission accomplished. So next it's uh, time to start relicking the body. I'm just using a Stanley knife blade here and um, an orbital sander just to give myself a rough guide as to where I need to start relicking. What I'm using to do the actual relic work is mainly just very sharp implements, so Stanley knife blades uh, and I found leather working tools to work really well. Because um, you find that over the years a nitrocellulose finished, it, it doesn't have that um, sanded look. It, it chips and it cracks. Um, a lot of people put the bodies in, in a freezer and use a sort of freeze-thaw method um, where the where the paintwork then expands and contracts and creates small um, crack lines. Um, now I, here's a quick picture of how not to do it. I picked up this Stratocaster at a second hand shop for about 50 quid. Um, and that is dreadful. You can't relic poly. You can't relic polyester. It's not really possible. I mean you, obviously you can but it, it looks dreadful. When you sand it, it, it has this sort of swirly effect and it's too smooth, it's too it's too hard. Um, so I wouldn't try relicking poly. It, it just doesn't look good. I was finding any pictures I could online of John Strat just to try and make it as close as I could. Um, it's not exactly the same wear pattern. But without having his actual strat, that's always going to be a bit of a struggle. Um, so if you're watching this, John, just pop your strat in a jiffy bag and send it over the pond to me. I promise I'll return it. So I used a variety of different stains as I went along. Um, oak stain seems to give that desired grey, the aged look. But I also used some uh, yellow food colouring around the wear pattern. Because when you observe John's strat closely, you'll see that it's faded through the layer of paint to yellow at the edges. And the yellows remained. Now I believe that's because the bodies were actually dyed that yellow colour in the middle of the sunburst. Um, or at least that's what I've read on the Tinterweb, that great bastion of accuracy. Now I'm using little leather working gouges just to mimic the chips on John's body along with fine sandpaper 
Stanley Knife does a good job of emulating those hairline cracks that often form around any chips in nitrocellulose. So. so next it was time to fit the new Wilkinson high mass steel bridge. Although it was a six point trem system like the original it didn't quite fit uh, so I had to fill the old holes with some dowels and wood glue and then re-drill. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, let's say it didn't quite get it right the first time. Uh, the high E felt just a little bit too close to the edge of the board so I had to do it a second time. Um, it was well worth it in the end. Uh, the quality is light years ahead of the original Squire Zinc trim system. This thing was so light and flimsy. Uh, so it should improve the tone. So next it was time to finish the wear above the pit guard. Uh, this wear pattern is quite extreme, but it's also a, a hallmark of John's Strat. So it was important to get this right. Uh, I presume there's so much wear there, just as a result of uh, years of aggressive strumming. We know that he plays a lot of fun griffs with a reasonably heavy pick. So that that'll probably explain why there's so much wear in that area. So yeah, once I'd finished relicking the back of the body, I could begin putting it back together. I got rid of the plastic shim in the neck, and I made a, an angled shim out of hardwood, just to maximise resonance, and when I put it back together and I set it up, um, wow, it's a really nice guitar now. Um, I've owned all manner of strats, from custom shop to American standard, um, classic vibes. ESP navigators and what have you and this thing it's up there with the very best for me and I'm not just saying that just because I set it up I really couldn't be happier with how it's turned out and I'm going to be keeping this thing forever so anyway 